The Secrets of Technology is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Technology. Hi, I'm Dom Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of Technology, where we discuss the technology news that's important to you from a uniquely Catholic point of view. And joining me today on the panel are Joanne Mercier. Hi, Joanne. Hello, hello. And Father Corey Stika. Hi, Father Corey. How's it going? Very well, thanks. So it's no surprise. This is one of my favorite times of year because I'm a tech nerdy geek head <laughs> who loves Apple gear. And so there's this, the Apple spring event, and then there's the, going to be the Apple June WWDC where they roll out the software, and then there's the phone event in the fall. And those are like the three high points of the tech liturgical year. I'm sorry, I shouldn't no. say that. <laughs> Dom, no, Dom, no, Dom. quite all right. <laughs> you, you missed the perfect pun. You could have said, yes, my favorite time of the year. The flowers are blooming, the grass is turning green, and the apples are springing. Yeah, that's right. There you <laughs> apples go. Apples are blooming in Cupertino, that's for sure. <laughs> so, yes, we are talking about this uh, event that Apple had this week. Called, they called it Spring Loaded, and it's either that it was loaded full of stuff, or you've got to be loaded in order to afford it all, mm. <laughs> which is mm. probably closer to the reality. Uh, yeah, it was really spring loaded uh, for things, and and it was another one of these Apple keynote events where it's they they had it recorded. It was, I mean, it was it was really you know slick. I gotta say, they've really gotten this slickness down. They've got like motion picture quality special effects and stuff like that. It, it's impressive. I think if they ever go back to live, we're all going to be disappointed. Yes. Because we're enjoying this type of, (laughs) and it's done in an hour. Yes. That's the best part. And and let's be honest, Tim Cook does not have the on-screen personality that Steve Jobs had. Yeah, who does? Yeah. I mean, it's very hard to find, uh, you know, tech CEOs. There is a handful you could find who could probably pull that off. Yeah. Um, But uh, yeah, I enjoyed like the, uh, they, they threw a couple of little, uh, um, interludes in there, like little uh, scenes, including a Mission Impossible style of oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Tim Cook has it, having to break into his own labs to, in order to steal the uh, the the M1 chip. We'll, we'll get to why later on, but uh, yeah, it's just, it was fun. So that was that was a it, it was it was fun to watch. It. Joanne, you had a good point. It was it was exactly an hour. And exactly. In, in the past, <laughs> these Apple keynotes could go on for like tech keynotes in general. They kind of go on and on and on and on. This is get in and get out. Everything is done. And that was that was really good. And it's not so much. It's I think it's what the what the market can bear. If I want to use that phrase, because people want to see what the product can do, find out how much it's going to cost and when it's going to be available. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they would spend a lot of time in in the other in the live presentations of like and now because I'm not a gamer, you can all go moan at me. But they (laughs) spend a heck of a lot of time on the gaming stuff. And I'd be sitting there Mm -hmm. going, "Okay, this is a good time to go get a drink of water, go do something else because they're going to be here for 20 minutes. Well, and that's always been a traditional complaint against Apple products, at least up until the iPhone is it was not a gaming machine. Mm -hmm. Macs were never a gaming machine. You could get games for them. But if you wanted to play games, you had a PC or a Nintendo or a PlayStation. Right. You didn't do a Mac. Right. You know, and, and so I, I can see why they focused on that traditionally. And I, I, I wonder, though, if, if the idea of the big tech expo is going to die. And this, and this is one sign of that. You know, this yeah. idea of, you know, like, because, I mean, if, if Apple wants to, and Apple's not the only manufacturers doing this, but if they want to make their products appliances, this is one of the first things that's going to have to go away is this idea of we need to hype you up to buy the latest product. Instead, we need to explain to you why you need the latest product. Well, mm-hmm. uh, on the other hand, like, I think it's more like the car industry where they still have these big car rollouts, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, in Detroit, the hairs, the, the, the this year's new cars and they have a big thing, but it's not a all the consumers, all the individuals come. And I think those expos have actually have gone away. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I think we're going to have a hybrid in the future. My guess is we're going to have a, a, a pre-recorded video and in-person media. It, like so, they'll show mm-hmm. the video okay. streaming in on the big screen in the in the Steve Jobs Theater on the Apple campus, and there'll be journalists filling the the seats. And then after the keynote is done, all the journalists troop off to go, you know, 
touch and play with the things so they can write. The, I think because they want to have the journalists get all excited about it and having them in place is a way to keep the reality distortion field uh, going. But uh, yeah, yeah there's, there's that. But it's really not. They're not keying it anymore just for journalists. No. They are keying it for people who may have just bought an iPhone and what else can I get to go with oh, this iPhone? Definitely. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a you an know? hour long ad, really, for, for their products. Mm. And I think that's a I I think it's a great idea to to do uh, to a way to get this stuff out there and to get their story told and for, for a mass audience. So let's talk about the products themselves that they announced. So uh, right off the top, they rolled out like three things, bam, 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 like like right off the top. <laughs> uh, so let's start with the Apple Card. Uh, this was interesting to me. Uh, I have an Apple Card, and one of the things that bugs me about it it's, till till now is unlike any other credit card, I couldn't get one for my wife Melanie to use. Almost every credit mm-hmm. card you can you, they give you two, one for you, one for your spouse. I mean that's just a standard mm-hmm. thing. But this was each of us had to apply separately, and Melanie wasn't interested. In, Melanie's work is is you know is a a, a stay at home mom. I'm trying to think of the word stay at home mom. She doesn't have mm-hmm. a source of income, so she couldn't get a card anyway. So but and so it was always like I'm buying stuff and getting the three percent or two percent or one percent, but she couldn't. Well now we can share a card, and that's really good. And it was very interesting. Mm-hmm. So. They, it's not just sharing a card. They made a point to say that it's about both people building up their credit lines and build their credit equally together. It's a shared credit that affects both credit scores. And this comes out of, I think, a previous criticism was that like this one guy, you know, this, this public developer was saying he got a really high credit limit on his Apple card, but his wife got a very low credit limit and he thought that was discriminatory. Now the FTC investigated and they said there wasn't discrimination, but it does mm-hmm. kind of say, look, when you're a couple, when you're, you know, spouses, your credit limit is your credit score is really a shared thing, even though it's individualized. So this is a nice way to, to do that. And then there was uh, two people can co-own a card. The parents can share the card with up to five children, 13 years or older, with spending limits and controls, because we don't want to have those stories of ten thousand dollar spends on mm-hmm. stuff. So, what do Good you think? Luck with that. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do that bit of, of the, with the kids. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'd rather buy like uh, the Apple, the um, iTunes gift card, gift card, and load mm-hmm. it and let them spend that rather than give them my credit card. But what do you think? Is this a, a good idea? Now, I think the sharing with kids could be interesting if it could be done as a, where they basically get a, lo- uh, a preloaded credit card Yeah, that's based off of yours. So you could say, give, you know, from my credit limit, give son one $50, I think $100. That's what, I think that's what they're saying. Yeah. And it, that actually would be a good way to do that. Where instead of saying, okay, he's got this much he can spend, no, or, you know, you know, he's got, you know. We can control, but it's just saying he's got a hundred bucks. It's the same as if you handed him a hundred dollars cash that you just withdrew from the ATM from your Apple card, basically. Uh, yeah, I think as a way of teaching kids good spending habits, good financial habits, how to handle credit cards. And I mean, it's not like mm-hmm. when we were kids, you know, where your parents would give you an allowance and you get ten dollars in cash. I mean, that's that's basically what I'm doing now with my kids. But that's not teaching them when they become adults and they get a debit card and a credit card. That doesn't teach them how to use those properly, which because it's different than with cash. So mm-hmm. I, I, there are, these are lessons I wish I had when I first mm-hmm. became an adult with a credit card. I had trouble with my credit. And, I mean, that's honestly. Uh, but I would like to help my kids. And so this might be something we would do as they get older. I don't think I, I like the fact it's 13 years on older because that there's a, there's a little bit of a age of reason stuff going on there. So that was good. Then there was a surprise announcement. This one kind of came out of left field for me of a new iPhone. Now, not a new iPhone model, but a new iPhone color, a new color for spring, purple. And it really kind of surprised me. What about you? Lilac. <laughs> Lilac. It's not yeah. exactly. Pur- it, I look at the purple and to yeah. me, purple is a darker color if you're going to yes. say purple it's, yeah. li- it's a liturgist in me fine but when, I look, <laughs> but when i look at that phone it looks more lilac uh, yeah so it's a lighter color it's and and i'm sitting here going well i have a red one would i rather have a lilac one and i'm like mm, no Why do you think- it, it, it's for, yeah. for people i don't think people are going to jump to it but i think it's a nice 
mm-hmm. edition, and I think that makes it six colors, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it, for, it, it gets for Apple. It finally gets to the six colors, which matches the uh, the original Apple rainbow logo. Correct. Now here's 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 a kind of the funny part to think of: how many of us, as soon as we get a phone, we slap a case on it, and you never actually see the original color of the phone. Mm-hmm. I guess you got a clear case. I always get a clear case because, yeah. I'm, See, I'm, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter what phone I've had. doesn't matter. Who, you know, of course, they've all been Androids. That Yeah. They've all been black. Yeah. And they've all had a black case. And it's not just because I'm a priest. It's like, it's a phone. I really don't care what color it is nobody wants to see an android phone no just kidding just kidding Ooh. no we just want to use yeah, it we don't want to just show oh, it we well, actually use our phones oh, yeah shots fired <laughs> no um yes. no, well that's actually a good point i mean is this a fashion move or i mean i was wondering is this about goosing sales you know like uh, six months ahead of the the fall new phone is that they need to goose some sales that's kind of an interesting move i i just think i i think Personally, somebody wanted to make, since they've been known for their six colors, yeah. that somebody mm-hmm. wanted to give us the six colors. Okay. Okay. That, that makes sense. I'll, I'll give you that. But I do think that there are people out there who buy their phone by the color. I, I know. I, I do. I think know, so, too. I, yeah. Mine was e- either white or silver. I did have a black one once, but I like the red. Yeah. Mm. Just because it distinguishes my phone from a lot of other phones. Yes. So Mm. that's the only thing. But then when they came out with blue this year, I was like, oh, darn. (laughs) I really (laughs) like that blue. Yeah. So it's, you know, I think, but I don't buy by the color. I buy by the The specs. Yeah. By the specs. I I wonder too, you know, there are people who they aren't on the Apple cycle where, you know, they're ready to buy every October or whatever it is when they come out in the fall. So now they can catch these kind of people that maybe they got on their contract in March, in April, and they're starting to look Mm. at new phones. All of a sudden, oh, I like that color, and I do need a new phone, need a new phone, want a new phone, you know, and so they can kind of catch those people, and there's more of them out there, and, you know, they can catch some of the Android people who, you know, because some of the Android phones start releasing about this time, too. You know, I think Samsung usually has a big event here coming up pretty quick, you know, so... I mean, they'll catch some of those kind of where they're the off Apple cycle people. Right. There are a lot of people who are not buying based on spec. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, we're we're the tech nerds and geeks. We care about those specs. But there are a lot of people who buy for other reasons. And I think Apple knows Mm -hmm. that. So that's that's a that's a good point. Uh, The next announcement that came really quick. The next one was podcasts. So the Apple podcast app and directory. Uh, they they talked about updating it. This really, I mean, obviously for obvious reasons, this really interests me. <laughs> uh, but uh, they they're creating channels or they're updating channels for creators. They've already had channels like SQPN has a channel already. We and uh, but there's not a lot of control, so they're going to give us a lot of these options for making them pretty and and different podcasts within the same network work together. So I'm I'm pleased with that. But the big thing was is subscriptions now. Recently, Apple has been telling us podcasters to stop using the term subscribe when we talk about asking people to start listening to our show in their apps. Uh, And I've been Mm. trying to do that with our shows and using the word follow, follow us. And that makes it's understandable now because they said at the time people think subscribe. They hear the word subscribe. They think pay. And so if you if no, if people don't have to pay for your podcast, then you're dis you're disincentivizing them and that's that's a good point but also i think <laughs> they announced subscriptions which is podcasts can now uh, offer to have subscription people can pay paid uh they have free there's three tiers of podcasts now free freemium and paid and freemium is free and then you could have in-app quote unquote in-app purchases to get more mm-hmm. content and then podcasts can offer special episodes special episodes they can offer ad free ep- ep- podcasts all that sort of stuff um mm, yeah it sounds, it sounds a lot familiar. like patreon or memberful there's other there's been things out there <laughs> here's the, here's the here's the the thing though it's 20 dollars a year so if you're a podcaster and you want to get in on this you pay apple 20 bucks a year and you get access to some tools and things like that and 30% of the subscription ah. for the first couple yep. of years going down to 15%. I think this really benefits uh, the casual podcaster as opposed to like SQPN where we're, we're I think, you know, we're, we're Patreon, you know, I think Patreon takes like 4% or something like that as a processing mm-hmm. fee. So um, what do you think? Uh, make a difference? 
I was going to say, I was waiting for you to say, and it's not going to be the 30%. <laughs> right, because right. I, yeah. Because I think even to the casual podcaster, like if I was back podcasting myself and thinking about this, I'm not sure I'd want to be paying them 30% and 20 bucks every year when I really don't make that much to begin with. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I suppose if for the person who's not making anything now, getting a little something is better than nothing. Maybe. I think they're going to have a hard sale on this one. They'll get people. Don't get me wrong. They will get podcasters who will jump on it. And I have a feeling these are the same podcasters who at the same time have the PayPal link on their website. They have the Patreon page. They have the YouTube channel that's monetized. This will just be another channel to get more money. Right. And possibly more money from the same people. Oh, and then they also have the Twitch stream that people subscribe to. <laughs> right, right. And yeah, I feel like this is a response to Spotify, and and that's a, an element, Father Corey, you bring up, which is there's so many channels to get podcasts through. This only monetizes the one, which is what you're saying, mm-hmm. and so then you've got to monetize all the different ones, and it it becomes a hassle for the listener and a hassle for the the podcaster. And I can see, I can see him, I can see multiple, you know, podcasters also saying, okay, well, we'll just, you know, like the freemium one. We're literally whatever content, extra content we put on Patreon, like, you know, SQPN, we do our Patreon exclusives. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to throw it on Apple Podcasts as well, because it's really not that much more work once right. you've actually done the, the exclusives for Patreon. Just throw it up. Nothing on Patreon says it has to be exclusive, right. exclusive with Patreon. Of course. Of course. Fact, we, we take them and usually about a month or two later, we put them in our regular streams yeah. for everyone else. Exactly. Yeah. So I think for, so that's for, for, I mean, that's what I don't want to talk too much about from the podcast perspective, from the listener perspective, uh, they've redesigned the app, redesigned the directory. I think it's going to improve the experience a little bit. And I think it's good because the, uh, they haven't done a lot in that realm and Spotify has really picked, picked up the pace. They've really uh, come up quickly on Apple, uh, as a, as a force in the podcasting uh, space. So, that that mm-hmm. was interesting. Uh, I want to move quickly on to air tags. Air tags have been talked about in the tech circles for a long time, partly because there was an accidental leak in some software where they were, mm-hmm. they were mentioned. Uh, so, what's an air tag? They're uh, little round disks devices that you put on other things like your keys, your backpack, your purse, whatever, and you can, they help you track them down. Now, there have been things like this forever. I've been using the Tile tracking system mm-hmm. for ages. I've got like a dozen of them. My kids' Kindles, my keys, my wallet, uh, in the, <laughs> all of various shapes and sizes. Uh, like literally every day, at least once a day, a child comes to me and says, can you help me find my Kindle? Uh, and I say, it's in your bed. <laughs> I looked. Okay, yeah. let's let's do the thing. Beep, beep, beep. It's in your bed. <laughs> 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 so... What and there, there was a a big to do. Tile was getting upset because they felt like Apple was creating it was was a but when they heard about AirTags, Apple was going to have monopoly on this. They were going to force them out. There's questions of the getting a lawsuit mm-hmm. or Federal Trade Commission. So that, I think that really is what delayed these coming. A couple of weeks ago, Apple announced that the Find My Network. So this works through your the Find My app on your phone. And the Find My Network was. Uh, expanding to allow third parties to also enter into it. So they had a tracker from a company called Chipolo. It's not Chipotle. It's <laughs> It sounds like Chipotle, <laughs> but it's like Chipolo. Uh, Belkin earbuds, which the, so just like Apple's earbud, earbuds, AirPods, that's what I mean. Uh, and uh, a Dutch bike company called Van Move. I'm going to guess that they're high-end uh, e-bikes uh, so, that you, so that they can be Start, sought for, uh, search for in the Find My app. So now Apple has announced their AirTags as well. And here's how they work. They, they use uh, th- any modern phone can use it to find it. They can say, oh, it's over there and they can activate it. But if you have a phone, an iPhone 11 or later, they have the, the ultra wideband U1 chip. They can help you with precision finding, like literally point you at where it is at the couch and you walk over to it, and it tells you how many feet away it is, which is something that n- Tile or none of the others actually do yet. They don't do that direction finding. And that's one of the things I, I, that is a downside with the Tile is you you can make it beep, but if it's buried, say, in blankets and pillows, it's hard to hear, whereas this walks you right to it. And that, that's really kind of interesting. Uh, 
Um, and Apple says the big thing, their their big mantra is privacy, that even Apple can't get the location. It rotates the Bluetooth identifiers on a regular basis so that they can't be cataloged and put in a database. It's end-to-end -end encrypted. It can notify you if there's an unknown AirTag, so one that you haven't paired with your phone, traveling with you place to place, uh, i.e. stalker mm. mode. <laughs> uh, so if, wow. say, someone you know puts one in your bag, unknowing to you, it'll tell you, hey, it's here. And then one of the things it does is it will allow, if you find one of these unknown air tags, you can use your phone to deactivate it, turn it off mm. so that it can't be tracked, even though it's not yours. Mm. Uh, you can also, if you happen to find a device out there, you can use, you can use your phone to tell, it, to tell you uh, how to get in touch with the person to let them know you found their device. Uh, so that's really good. And one of the best parts is the Tile network is confined to all, only Tile users. So anyone who's got the Tile app installed on their phone, whereas this lets any modern iPhone be part of the, the Find My network so that if any iPhone user, and there's like a billion phones out there, uh, literally, <laughs> any iPhone user in proximity will alert the network that it's seen an AirTag. All private. Your phone doesn't get you know listed. Nobody knows anything about who whose phone actually saw it. All that sort of stuff. So it makes it very compelling. Uh, the two other bits about it: they're twenty nine dollars each, or a hundred dollars for a four pack, and they have a user replaceable battery. And it's the standard. I think twenty three oh two or whatever thirty two, whatever that the, the standard watch battery is. So what do y'all think? Yeah, I'll buy those. <laughs> <laughs> Only because. Um... We, I can see use for them, especially on key rings, because I'm always, you know, where's the keys? I don't know. Where'd you put the keys? I have no idea. So <laughs> right. I would like to put, put it on the back of certain um, um, remote controls. Yes, remote. Because mm. those tend to go into the couch. Yes. <laughs> uh, as no. lots of other things do. And I think for luggage tags. Oh, yeah. I think it would That's be very big. helpful for luggage tags. Now, I'm not buying the Hermes leather $400. <laughs> $400. Oh, <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I was like, really? It's even, it's even crazier that Apple is selling a $50 enclosure right. for the key ring. And I'm yeah. like, okay, somebody on Amazon's going to have this in silicone and yeah. it'll be just fine. In a week, you can buy a $5 knockoff on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I can tell you that Find My itself has been a very useful tool. Oh, huge. Not, not just for recovering my husband's phone that flies off of car tops when he leaves it there, <laughs> but for also my husband and I, and, 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 in a, and in a very positive and good way, yeah. keeping track of each other. If somebody's late mm -hmm. right. or if somebody doesn't answer their phone because it's just him and I at our age, it's a very good thing to use. Definitely. Definitely. My, my wife and I use that too. And my elderly mom, I've, she had, mm -hmm. had an iPhone and yeah, it was a way of, you know, when she was still driving, like, where's mom now? <laughs> She's not here exactly. yet. Exactly. Yeah. It should not. And the disclaimer is you don't use it for stalking purposes. No, that's right. That's right. No. So. Now, how, how big are these? Do you know? I didn't see the picture of oh, it. Oh yeah. Uh, the, what are, did they show it relative to the battery? Or, they, Cause I mean, everybody knows what a 2032 battery is. It's, Slightly larger than a 23, 20, uh, the, whatever the battery size, the watch battery is. Uh, right. So it's, it's about, it's like is a little it bigger than, than a quarter. I think it's a, I think it's about a quarter or maybe even a little bigger. I think, you know, somewhere. I was going to say a 22, a 2032 battery is about the size of a quarter, give or yeah. take. So it's just a little bigger. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that would be great for stuff like remotes and things like that. Um, it, it's, it, it's interesting technology. That's for sure. It, it's right. going to be interesting to see how it plays out, though. I, I do like some of the, the like the non-stalker features and things like that. A again, this is one of these things, though. It would be nice if it was available on more than just iPhone. But that's the that's the uh, yeah. we're going to be talking about another thing later on that should be on more than an iPhone. But Apple personally didn't do it because yeah. it would hurt their sales. <laughs> right. But True. in this case, it's I think it's they could only do like the all the privacy stuff, the whole thing within their ecosystem. I mean, there's a. Uh, so they say. Well, yeah. Well, well that yeah, I suppose that's debatable. <laughs> that's I'm skeptical, but okay. As far as the price goes, it's it's it, 
it seems like a lot, but it actually com- it's it's really competitive with tile. I mean, t- tile tractors mm-hmm. are in that same price range, so uh, that it's it's they didn't go for the the premium super Apple premium p- price on that, so that was good too. All right, so let's move on to talk about the next thing they announced. I mean, this, again, jam packed. The Apple TV 4K. Well, first they announced that Ted Lasso season two is coming July 23rd with a br- really awesome trailer, and I'm really excited by that mm. because I, I love that that show it was really great uh but then they announced a new apple tv 4k this was kind of interesting they ha- we haven't had one in a while a new apple tv uh it's gonna have uh, the new chip the a12 it's gonna support hdr high frame rate uh in, in i don't know if it's 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 gonna be 4k but it's gonna be like 60 frames per second so i, I want to boil it all down when you want lifelike video there's a couple different things you need. The 4K is is the first step, but you also need high definition range, which refers to the amount of color range, co- I think color and light, and then you want a high frame rate. And once you get high enough frame rate, high enough definition range, because your eyes see a lot, more, you know, a lot more colors than uh, your TV, you can usually show. So when you get those two things plus the 4K, you're getting really close to the realm of reality like looking through mm-hmm. a, a window mm-hmm. sort of reality. So this isn't quite that, of course. Uh, there's not actually all that much content that gets to the reality level, but we're getting there. It's a, it's an incremental step. A couple things. They redesigned the Siri remote. Hallelujah. Uh, because instead of having that little glass trackpad, it's now getting an actual click pad. It looks like the original iPod, frankly. Um, mm-hmm. It's got a jog control. Uh, this, it can it, allow control your TV. The Siri button is now on the side, so you're not accidentally pressing it when you're trying to pause the show. Tell me how I know. Ask me how I know that. Um, <laughs> it's no longer all glass. It's now aluminum, which means it's less breakable. Uh, and uh, what was the other thing about it? Um, so, well, so that's the, the remote. And you can buy the remote separately and use it with the last generation Apple TV. So that's actually kind of interesting. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the, oh, no. you, you forgot the other big feature. It's got a power button that turns off the TV. Right. And you can, a mute button. Yes. You can control your button. TV. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's that's actually good because right now I have to separately turn on the Samsung and I've got to have the two remotes all the time. Yeah. That's a pain in the butt. So uh, the other thing that was interesting was you can now color balance your TV with your phone. It's fascinating how this works, and and I don't want to get into you can watch the the stuff online to how how it actually works. But it uses the phone's cameras to to look at the colors reproduction on your TV, and uh, basically no more muddy Game of Thrones nighttime battle situations, which is one of the big complaints <laughs> of that last season of Game of Thrones. Like they had a battle at night, no one could see what was going on. Uh, but this is how to get your TV optimized, and traditionally. Optimizing your your TV settings, your display settings was a pain in the neck. Oh. It was really hard. Um, it took professional equipment, or you just had to guess at it. But this this is nice. Uh, oh, also the important thing: it's one hundred seventy nine dollars for the thirty two gig, one ninety nine for sixty four gig. You don't really, I don't I don't know anyone that needs the sixty four gig Apple TV. I've I've never run into anyone who's ever said I've run out of space on <laughs> on the thirty two. Um, right. And see, I've always gotten the 64 because I keep saying, is there a threshold somewhere yeah. where all of a mm-hmm. sudden I'm going to meet it and not know it and I'm going to have to take, you know, apps off this thing? I haven't met it yet. Yeah, I don't. I haven't heard mm-hmm. of anyone who's ever met the 32 gig threshold on an Apple TV, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, 179 is expensive, uh, just straight up for set top boxes. That's you could buy a Roku, a Chromecast, and a Fire TV stick for all together for less than, than mm-hmm. that price. So that is a that is a deterrent a little bit. I wonder, you know, how many. Of course, you're going to get the upgraders. You're going to get the people who upgrade. But I wonder too if they're they're trying to get it for people who they've got a nice smart TV, but it doesn't have everything they want. Right. You know, and that's that's kind of a because it's kind of a tough hurdle because you can get decent smart TVs for not that expensive, but you're also getting the TV. You're actually getting the LCD display you're going to sit and watch. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the competing products. Uh, well, I mean, one advantage is, of course, is you're getting the full experience where you could just leave your TV on this and do everything you need through there as if it was a smart TV. Because you really can't... I don't know. Can you even buy basic lcd tvs anymore 
everyone I ever see, they're always smart TVs. I mean, you can maybe get like the little like 20 inches or whatever for your kitchen or something like that. But like the big wall TV, like all of us have now, you really can't get them smart TVs. You can like buy that. a monitor so it has, doesn't have a tuner mm. in it. Like right. my brother's business is he, he, he puts um, digital signage in, in businesses. Mm-hmm. And, and so he buys all of these monitors that are just giant screens. And you could buy one of those. And frankly, I don't see why I don't really need a smart TV or a TV with a tuner anymore because everything is streamed or cable box. Right. The TV I have in the living room is, is uh, one of those. It's a smart TV without tuner. I actually have a tuner box for it because right. I do go over the air uh, antenna. Yep. But... Um, it doesn't have the tuner. Of course, oh, it's a little bit cheaper for that. Yeah, you know, but uh, it's just uh, it's gonna be interesting because it, it it sounds really interesting. It sounds like this could be this could be one of the products that could be a lot of a lot of fun to have. Yeah, but it's got again, it's got that hurdle. You know, you've got Chromecast, which is as simple as either an iPhone or an Android. Play this. Yeah, you bring it up and hit play. You don't even have to worry about Google Remote or Apple Remote because it's just okay. I watch this YouTube channel. Play this. You know, BritBox. Play this. But I don't like playing from my phone because it ties up the phone and every time I'm on a control, like, I, cause I do this sometimes with uh fire, I got a fire stick and sometimes I've done this mm-hmm. with, even with the Apple remote on the phone. Cause I can't find the, the physical remote and <laughs> uh, the click I got lost in this, in the couch. And, uh, and it's like, Oh, I have to wake up the phone and use it to control it every time. And that kind of annoys me a little bit, but I, I get your point, which is it's simpler, it's straightforward. And a lot of people it's, it's plenty. And it's, especially if you're talking parents, right. You know, being able to just click and walk away. Yeah. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Every member of the family. Joy? Yep. If you're in the ecosystem again, and I think Apple is really starting to play to their ecosystem, then you're going to want everything that ties together, which is why I got an Apple TV in the first place. We really wanted, we really wanted a cord cut. I had used a Roku for a little while and I said, you know, it, it, it needs a separate this and you gotta, I said, let's just get the Apple TV. And Again, that's what runs our screens. We have two of them. It runs our screens. And I'm looking at this new one, number one, the remote, definitely. Because you can't, we, you can't and having a, a wheel back to scroll with is going to be very nice when you're trying to go past the commercials. It's a beautiful thing. Right now, trying to tap the edge of the, the trackpad oh, on yeah. the thing is a is a... It's maddening. It's maddening. <laughs> no, what's more maddening is you don't know which end is up and you yeah. you pick up the remote and your TV goes on when you don't want it to at three in the morning. Not a good thing. Mine mine only works for in my left hand. I don't know why. I cannot use the clicker in my right hand. Uh, it drives me crazy. Uh, yeah, That's sorry. interesting. All my rants are coming out. Sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. <laughs> but, the, but the color correction also speaks to me because oh, yeah. you can have the most beautiful TV and if you don't know how to put the right colors on there, and this this is an example, we had bought a brand new um, HDMI cable for our Apple TV downstairs because we have a, a 4K TV. So we were setting it up and Apple came on and said, would you like me to calibrate this, you know, oh, to, wow. to make it work? And I yeah. said, okay, sure, go ahead. And it did. And we both went, We've never seen the TV like that before. <laughs> I mean, it, it was right. definitely clearer. So imagine what you can do now when you're taking the room and the and the you know the screen itself with your iPhone camera. That's gonna that's gonna be a game changer for people. They they're gonna all of a sudden see the worth of their television set that they couldn't do themselves unless they hired somebody. Right. Right. And what was my third point? Because I did have a third point on this. And of course, it's just escaped me. Okay. So, but well, I am no. definitely putting money aside to get one because I think for us that we're going to take the one we have downstairs, put it upstairs. You know, we recycle and then I use right. one to go out and present with. So, good idea. Good idea. I know uh, several people who do that. Mm. And I, I do wonder, you know, looking at things that I know they've already had on, on the Apple TV, the uh, our Apple Arcade, Apple Fitness Plus. Right. I wonder how much of that is going to affect this as well. People saying, oh, well, I've got all these games on my, yep. you know, iPhone uh-huh. that I play when I can play them on TV and potentially future competition for the big console. That's the thing is I wonder where Apple – I'm really interested in the future of Apple TV. Is it going to become uh, a, a home tech hub 
where it will control, like mm-hmm. it already mm-hmm. d- does home kit stuff, but is it going to be sort of merging maybe with home pod now that that's off the market? And or is it going to get a screen? Maybe is it going to get a camera maybe for, you know, that sort of stuff and, and just become this central place where you control so much of the things that becomes a hub for all your tech. I think that's called a Mac mini. <laughs> well, <laughs> quite frankly, yeah. Yeah. but the other point I was going to make, um, because father Corey had mentioned you can get a smart TV and it can have all these apps in it. Well, unless you're get unless you're getting Apple TV in a smart TV, those mm-hmm. other apps are not refreshed as fast as they are on an Apple TV. Apple right, pushes updates. those out more often. And because I've seen the difference between like Amazon video on the Apple TV and on a smart TV. It's like, right. really? I don't remember. I, gee, that's like three versions ago. And I've seen that too with Chromecast. Of course, Chromecast, you're using basically the updated, they download the version as soon as you click it. So right. I've seen the same thing where, you know, Amazon or something like that. So it, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what this will do in that market. Plus, I don't trust Samsung, frankly. I don't trust their their, their, their privacy practices or non-privacy practices. Uh, I have I never set up the uh, the smart TV settings. It's not my TV is not on Wi-Fi. Uh, it never will be because I don't want I just don't trust them. And so that's that's I I trust Apple more. I mean, obviously, I mean, that that horse has left the barn. If I can't trust them, I've got uh, other bigger problems than my TV. All right, let's move on to the next one. So this is this one kind of came a little bit out of left field. Uh, I was hoping to see this, but I wasn't sure. Uh, this is the new iMac with M1, the the silicon M1 chip in it. I've been, uh, if you've been listening to my podcast for <laughs> the last couple of months, I've been kind of saying <laughs> when Apple has a new Ma- uh, iMac, I'm going to really be interested because I need to upgrade because it's so slow. Uh, and I'm a little... I'm 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 not completely disappointed. I'm a little disappointed, and I'm going to have to think about this because they didn't give me everything I wanted. Let's just put it this way. So let's talk about it. It's mm-hmm. the, okay. Let's talk about the fashion first. It comes in many mm-hmm. many lickable colors, <laughs> um, and it's redesigned so it's thinner. Uh, it's got a, a new uh, foot that it sits on, a new base. Uh, they talk about the colors because like the back color. Basically, it's designed for receptionist desks. It's sort of an acknowledgement that you see a lot of mm. iMacs at receptionist desks. And so it's got to look good from behind, which is interesting. Uh, it's still got the chin at the bottom, which is interesting. But now the glass goes from top to bottom. The, the current version, which I have, there's the aluminum at the bottom. But this is glass top to bottom front. The motherboard, they talk about how it's now tiny. And they showed it. Like, the reason they can make it so thin is... The motherboard, the the you know, which the CPU and all the rest sits on, is basically it could fit inside an iMac or I mean an iPad or maybe it's slightly bigger than your phone than your than my big I have an iPhone Pro Max, it could maybe fit just a little bigger than that. Like I mean, it is the computers now. <laughs> the limitation in size is the screen and not the not the the stuff that runs it. Um, now here's the thing that that got me right now. It's only available in the 24 inch it's it replaces the 21 and a half inch that they had no Mm -hmm. 27 inch and i really i am a screen real estate maniac i i i I could never have enough screen real estate and i've I've got like two 27 inch screens sitting in front of me right now and i still would take more if i could yeah but you said in the beginning receptionist desk yes Okay, and I think the 24 inch is going to be the sweet spot because a 27 is a little too big. Yes, definitely. For that type of an environment. So if they're going for that audience, fine. But I think the audience they're going after is all these people who decided to work at home. Mm -hmm. And they wanted something small that they could either move around because they don't have a dedicated space. And I think 24, I I've had a, tw- I've had 24 inch monitors in 27 and it's just a little bit of difference. I know it, it really is. <laughs> and can't yeah. you run more monitors off this thing anyway? So you could buy like oh, two yeah. 43 surround <laughs> ones Ooh, and attach it to it ideas. or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's be honest. If you're going to do that. Either get a, you know, MacBook pro with a dock or get a mini Mac or something like yeah, that. True. You know, True, you just have has, the monitors. But this has the best camera in a Mac, and that's not saying much. It has the best <laughs> yeah. camera in a Mac. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They, that's a, they talked about replacing the camera. It's 1080p. It's not 4K. It's 1080p. Mm-hmm. You can buy better. 
cameras. Uh, they're using the same sort of computational videography that they do in their phones to make it look better, all that kind of sort of stuff. Uh, better microphones. But you're right, Joanne, low bar. They've had terrible cameras. I, I mm-hmm. don't use the built-in camera for our, our podcast. I use a Logitech sitting on a mm-hmm. on an arm in front of me. Uh, so th- that's just, you know, so I'm glad they're doing it. And it, I, I found it interesting throughout the presentation how they kept talking about when you need to Zoom, when, you, when you're on a Zoom meeting, when you, not FaceTime. They've pretty much acknowledged yeah. that what people are doing is they're using Zoom. And I, I thought right. that was kind of mm-hmm. fascinating. That's why I think that's their audience. Yeah. Is the, is the person now who is working from home or the parents that have to have a classroom at home for their kids. I think that's what they're shooting for the 20. They'll get to the 27, I think. Uh, I or know. Maybe they'll come up with a 30. Oh, no. Now you got me thinking. So that's the thing is, do I get the 24 now or do I wait for the mythical 27 uh, or 30? Yeah. Oh, it's just, so tough. Let, let, let's just be honest, <laughs> Dom. You, you and I, we want the wall mat. <laughs> we do. 20, we do. 65 inch, slap it on the wall. Yep. 8K resolution that Ooh. you have sitting, you know, like arm's length from you. Is that too much? That's what we want. Is that too much How to much ask? money you got? Well, How much money the... you got for that? I know. Okay, reality, reality. Okay. Uh, speaking of wall mount, they are selling it with uh, a Visa mount. So that's the thing where you can put it on the arm. So you can buy a Visa that's mount. That's awesome. Option. Yeah, it's really neat. That was one. That was my one complaint with my... 21 inch i had the old 21 and a half inch you know from 2009 but you the 27 inch version did have the visa capability the 21 inch didn't um i like the colors the colors are way big time throwback to the original imac the yes. old uh crt screen it looks interesting you know this is thin this is really 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 thin i was reading an article here where they actually had to move the headphone jack to the side of the thing because it wasn't deep enough right to put the the Mm. back of the headphone jack inside the case on the back it had to go to the side literally 11 Um, millimeters that's like the thickness of an ipad it's crazy and that's that's what i was gonna say it's it's it really it strikes me as just as a larger ipad with a larger bezel and i kind of wonder you know i could almost see them eventually moving the imac something like that where it's you put it on a dock and you do all that you got the keyboard and everything there and then you can pick it up and the one thing they still don't have is touch touch screen mac right <laughs> and oh, oh yeah they see... do <laughs> <laughs> well yeah we'll get to that mac? <laughs> well well we'll get to that joanne's previewing the the last announcement but uh yeah oh the the, the yeah the, the yeah. ipad i mean something though that is declared a macintosh right, right. that has touch screen and i can see that being the eventual goal for the imac where literally you'll have a dock you'll slide it in there It'll you do all your stuff with your keyboard and mouse and all that. You pull it out and you've got a you like you cradle in your arm as a like you would an iPad and yeah, yeah. do your swiping and everything and I could see so, that. I could see that. So the It looks interesting. It looks cool. A couple more really- specs, just the four USB C ports, including two of them are Thunderbolt four. Uh the port thing nowadays with computers is a little confusing because you have USB C shape and they're either USB three data or USB four, which is also Thunderbolt four. So that's a I, that whole thing is kind of confusing and a mess. It's hard to keep track of what's what. But it's four ports. Uh, on the, the uh, one of the models comes with two ports. The other model comes with four. So you you, you got to look at that new magnetic power connector, which is interesting. Although I wonder, like they've had that MagSafe with the 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 laptops for a long time, and they brought it back. Mm-hmm. But with a laptop, if you knock the MagSafe cable out, you it's got a battery it keeps running what happens on the imac if you knock the magnetic cable out your imac good question turns off (laughs) now it's it's, i mean it's possible they they put in a small battery in there enough for you to kind of go oh crap (laughs) right maybe i would hope here's the telling thing it is now matched with a color matched woven cable yes. have we finally figured out that those lovely cables bend <laughs> way too much yeah woven cable and cause big problems right about time make it for the rest of the line i mean i could just see the obvious thing of how many times have you tripped over your cable your computer cable your, the desktop your cable? tv cable <laughs> yeah What's that? The desktop computer, very little, because yeah. uh, I wrote them behind the, the the desk and the desk in the wall. But for some people, probably more. But if if they're making this like like speculated of you know being able to move this places, you're not going to do that. Yeah, yeah. And it would be better off, especially if you know Mac OS does pretty fair about handling power outages, sudden power outages, and so on. That 
it would be, be better off to kill, you know, kill the power to the machine than kill the machine. That's mm-hmm. d- definitely true. Yeah, it's a big slab of glass. Someone takes us into their kitchen, they're, you know, they're cooking or whatever, and they've got their, their IMAX sitting there, and they trip over the cable. They don't want to see the IMAX sitting face down on the kitchen Ooh. floor with glass everywhere. No. Oh, that, it just hurts just thinking about it, so let's not. Yeah. So <laughs> this is, even if it doesn't have a battery, this is a very smart idea yeah. if that is. Because, yeah, you, you know, we're from home person. I could see someone, they've got it sitting in their, you know, in their living room. Right. They've got it sitting mm-hmm. on their kitchen table. Oh, it's time for supper. Pick up the iMac, take it to another room, take it to a spare bedroom, take it to an office, whatever. Well, and so the all, the power supply is in the cable, right? So that which is as well as an Ethernet port, which I think is a very it's fascinating yes. to put it down there. Mm, that, that could that yeah. could be then you could buy an extra power adapter and core and cable and have them in t- two different places. Like I, I do that with my my laptop, so mm-hmm. you could just you know disconnect, pick it up, and carry it to the other room and put it down. And that's a fascinating yeah. thing. So the other thing that they, that it comes with it is so they, they have the new keyboards and, you know, the color match and all that sort of stuff. But one of the keyboards, so they have several different keyboards. One of the keyboards has Touch ID for the first time, which is fascinating. Yay. It's a wireless keyboard with Touch ID. I'm a, little, I'm a little bummed they didn't do Face ID instead because if it's I, – because I, I want to have the ID, the, the wireless thing, so I don't have to type in my key, password all the time and all that sort of stuff. And having it be touch ID means I have to use the Apple keyboard. I like, I've got Mm -hmm. my third party clicky clacky mechanical keyboard that I really enjoy using. I I, I don't, I I want to keep using it. I don't want to have to give it up, but I might have to, if that's the case. Um, Yeah. I I just wonder though, because of the distances, most of your desktop computers are, you know, like my, my, my display is five feet away. Right. And mm. if that's really hard for Face ID to be able to yeah. focus in on versus a phone that we usually hold about a foot away from our face when we do our face recognition. Right. Or the iPad even. Yeah. I was going to say, I got to be honest. The phone for me is the best f- f- face recognition, Face ID that mm. I think mm. Apple has. I have a problem with the iPad and I have no idea. The only thing I can think of is because of where I'm holding it. I'm putting my thumb over the camera. Oh yeah, yeah. That, right. Yeah, that's I do it. it. <laughs> yep. So just and the the pricing on that it's twelve ninety nine for the low end one that has two ports and you only get four color choices. Fourteen ninety nine oh. for four ports and then you get seven color choices and the Touch ID. So uh, that's that's interesting. Um, that's a lot. That's not that bad, actually. Yeah. I mean, yeah. For Apple products, that really is not yeah. that bad. Right. All right. I was expecting it to be a little more. But it, it's the M1 chip, and it's it's fast. It's powerful. It's got, it's all that goodness of the new, we're doing the new thing, and everyone's been talking so much about it. So uh, I'm still, I, I'll be honest, I'm still very interested in, in it. And, and maybe it is a Mac Mini with a big screen would be a better deal for me than waiting to get the iMac of my dreams. Um, so we'll we'll see how things go uh, on that front. I, I will throw in my usual my my usual gripe. There's absolutely no user user serviceable anything on uh, this thing. Th- those yeah, days yeah. are long gone. Well, Father Gray, mm-hmm. as you're saying before, th- these companies are all moving to these being consumer appliances. You know, we 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 don't have we can't service our TVs anymore. This you know my pick of the week is kind of a teaser to that because right. I built a system that was designed to be. I can replace everything in it. Right. I put it together. Right. I can take it apart. You know? <laughs> oh, and for people who need this type of a thing, you can get the keyboard with the numeric keypad yes. and touch ID. Nice. Yeah. That would be so that would be nice. That would be me. For accountants like my husband, that's a dream. I, I love having the uh the I like the keypad. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a c- accountant, but I just love having it there. I use it. it it, so and, it's good. It, and it would be nice if Apple would would make that keyboard, but with something like the the Cherry MX switches or something like that, the mechanical switches yeah. that are you know, because because not everybody wants the little short throw mm. keyboard. I know they keep they Especially keep working at it. Yeah, they keep working at it. They keep pushing that on us, and we don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, well, let's get quickly get to the last one because we're we're, uh, we're taking a lot of time with these, but uh, there's so much here. Uh, the iPad Pro, as we previewed a little bit ago. They're putting on the iPad Pro, they're putting the M1 chip. Now, I think this is fascinating. So they're putting this desktop chip in it. The desktop chip, which is based up previously on the previous iPad chip, which was an A12. I'm kind of curious why they're going this route of putting the desktop chip in it, which has the CPU, the GPU, and, and the RAM, all that stuff integrated in it. 
uh, more power, more GPU, more battery life, up to two terabytes of storage. Uh, the port, the you know the USB C port now has Thunderbolt capability, which is interesting. Uh, you can now, if you get the cellular version, you can get five G. Uh, they've improved the the front facing camera uh, with a feature called Center Stage, which keeps you centered. As if you move around in front of it, it keeps you centered. If more than one person enters in, it it frames it properly. I thought it's, it's kind of interesting. And then it, the the display uses mini LED mini LEDs and the same tech that they have in their five thousand dollar Pro XDR display. Uh, the the same tech. They kept the price the same eight hundred bucks for the eleven inch. Uh, for the for that one, the twelve point nine inch is now a hundred dollars more at starting at ten ninety nine. Take my money. <laughs> <laughs> take my money today because that's your touch iMac that's your touch mac it, it, it's going to be the touch mac especially with the thunderbolt for me to be able to hook this up to a hub now that i can then run you know two monitors right yeah that's you know for some people not so much for me in some respects for me, but for a lot of people who are looking for that portability that don't want to carry the, even the smallest MacBook pro ever made. I think this is going to be their, their machine. I, I really do. Especially when you have all these other things, now you can attach to it. I've been using hubs on mine for a couple of years now. And I'm even, you know, every once in a while will say to me, Nope, the iPad cannot support this. It's too much power. Now I don't think that's going to be a problem with the M1 chip. So I'm looking to turn mine, my iPad Pro into one of those. But I just wish they had the colors. Why can't they have the six mm. colors on this one? <laughs> yeah. Well, that'll, that'll be the regular iPad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is fascinating to think about, like, with an M1 chip in there that has all that power to, to do all of the stuff they've been talking about, to, you know, to render stuff and all that sort of stuff in an iPad. Yeah, like where mm -hmm. are we going with this? Where's mm -hmm. what's the future? That's really what is interesting to me is the future of this. Well, and it's been it's been rumored almost since the day the iPad came out that eventually they want to merge the the Mac and iOS lines. Mm -hmm. And you know, Big Sur with its iOS like interface really kind of restoked those uh, thoughts. Mm -hmm. And this is just going to jump that up again. And it, you know, I don't see it as a bad thing. Uh, other than again, you know, it, it um, for those who like the traditional desktop computer, that could um, push them away from Macintosh. Right. As long as we can still install software on our own, just like we do in our Macs today, I can install mm. all the little menu bar things I want and all the little utilities. As long as I don't start locking down my Mac experience the way that mm -hmm. iPhone and iPad mm. are locked down, I'd be fine with it. But it's that's what concerns me is the uh, we're locking things down for your own good. And that that worries me. And, and Apple's done some of that already in Mac, which you can disable. I mean, they've got yeah. uh, things that 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 lock Gatekeeper things down and you can very that, easily yeah. get around. Gatekeeper. That's I couldn't think of what it was called. Yeah, but yeah. It, it's and, and I don't know. I Apple, you know, of course, there have been times in Apple's history is, after iOS came out that they've been really half hearted about Mac. And I just wonder if this big push they're doing with Mac now is kind of leading people. Uh, I'd say that to the iOS. The last year proves different. I mean, they're really pushing the, that ma the mm. Mac. I mean, that's on yeah, its I own. I don't think so. I don't think so. This is something. This is something made for me, where I want to have a small Mac Mini at home to still do the big things that I want to do, yet have the same power to be able to now take an iPad Pro with where the where the i the Mac itself can run some of the same programs in in um Rosetta, Rosetta or not yeah. Rosetta. No, yeah. it's the whatever no, it's the, the other, other thing. thing. Yeah. It's the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> Which you can't remember, remember right now. Right. To be able to do that but still have the portability of something small to carry because I'm not getting any younger. And I'll tell you, carrying, you know, laptops with everything else in your bag is heavy. And with an iPad, it's not. One of the things that kind of speaks against this, uh, the idea of a merger as opposed to this interoperability is they've already split off iOS into two different things. You have I iOS and iPad OS now. And I, what the, I can see mm -hmm. them doing something like that where it's, they're related operating systems and they can run all their the software together 
but they work differently on, depending on the form, the form factor of the device. So I could see where the software runs on a Mac and you could do a lot more with it, but it, and it worked, you can run it on an iPad and it does it a little differently. And I just, I, I think that's more likely a future. So then another possible thought, again, this is, this is all kind of throwing, you know, what ifs out there, but so you've got iPad OS merging back into Mac and Possibly. you know Mac becoming the new iPad OS or iPad OS becoming the new Mac. And you've got something like these, we talked about the iMacs where they're bigger iPads on, on frames, basically. So you could take, you could have your little iMac sitting here and it's basically a cradle with an iPad OS or I, uh, iPad Pro, and you're working on your iMac. Oh, I need to go to the other room, pick up the display. Now it's a touch screen with, you know, you do all the stuff with the pencil and all that. You do your work there. You go back, you slap it down the docking cradle. Now you've got your keyboard and mouse again. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm not so sure. Go ahead, Dom. The 24 inch screen on the uh, new iMac is almost exactly twice the size of the iPad Pro 11 and 12.9. You know, it's an interesting. I mean, people have talked about doing yeah. touchpad screens that size. No, that you I can know. Move. No, I mean... I, that's, yeah, I'm saying actually that's a, that's a point in your favor because it, it's, a, it's just a scale. It's just a scaling thing. And it's a very interesting scale. And I'm going to be on the other side of that saying, you know, it's bad enough sometimes with the size of this 12.9 iPad in certain situations is still too big for me to have in my hand all the time. A smaller one is easier. So uh, if you, if some of you, you know, he men want to take a 24 <laughs> inch and, you know, okay. all for it, you know, but or, I, or instead of iMac, how about a MacBook Pro, MacBook Air? Those or, are screens that are the size of an iPad. Right. Pro. You know, one of the things I was thinking, Father Corey, is it's more like I think it, we, what we might see is something along the lines of the Microsoft Surface, which is it's an I, iMac size screen that kind of bends down to be more like a, a desk, like in front of you. So it's mm -hmm. more flat mm -hmm. and you could do all the touch stuff on it in right. front of you like that, like you would on an iMac. I think that's. To me, that's a more likely future for the iMac, but I think I think you'll start to see MacBooks with touchscreens, and I think all that sort of stuff is is in the future. I think we should. Uh, we've been going on, on on about Apple stuff for a long time, and the uh, Android and the Windows fans are probably all tuned up by now. But uh, you know, well, I mean, uh, yeah. I'm an Android fan. I'd exactly. still get one of these and, iPads. And they can have their day, <laughs> right? When Google has I/O, that we'll we'll talk about them too. But you know, it's just Apple. It's a, it, it, part of it is that Apple is very popular. And they do some very interesting things that really push the technology market ahead. And they, you know, they drag them kicking and screaming. The other tech companies will make fun of them for a while and then start introducing this stuff into their own products. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see when the Samsung air tags come out, for example, but uh, Samsung tags, but uh, that sort of thing. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes, but I, I do want to move ahead. But first I want to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of technology, including Michelle H., David B., Dennis B., Christopher P., and Thomas V., their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue The Secrets of Technology and all the shows at StarQuest. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. Uh, I just want to ha talk briefly about that one headline that you talked about, Father Corey. Apple, it's come out that in a, in a court filing in the, the, the lawsuit between Epic Games and Apple, that Apple uh, previously had internally said, we're not going to make iMessage for Android because that would hurt uh, iPhone sales. Uh, they, the, and, and it's an interesting, interesting idea, interesting attitude. I, I mean, it's not surprising to me that, that they would not mm. want to give that advantage. And I've heard uh, um, iPhone users get kind of annoyed when an Android user is on a group chat because it messes the that, that green bubble in there or was the the green bubble in there messes up my ability to use memojis and all kinds of not, you know silly things like that for Good. for me that's yeah for me that seems silly for other people it's a, that's an important thing for some for some people um so the there is a bit of i guess a little bit of lock-in that they get from having iMessage being just on the apple but if, father gray i know you have a, an opinion on that <laughs> well, and this is this was speculated way back when when iMessage came out that it was really clear that they were intending this to be kind of the killer app because yeah let let's be honest I could I could see families such as yours Dom where yeah. you would have you know mom and dad might have the nice iPhones but then the kids would have the hundred dollar Android phone you know the just the cheap basic 
I can send text messages, I can do this, I can do that. Or even, heaven forbid, a flip phone. Kid might actually just have a flip phone that can just make calls and text. <laughs> right. Terrible. I know. I mean, that's abusive, isn't it? No. Um, <laughs> but if, if, you know, if you could get iMessage for the Android phone and the family could do all this with iMessage, that would make it so much less incentive to get even a cheap iPhone for the kids. Cheap, relatively speaking, whether used or, or one of those, like the SE models or something like that. So I, I, I could definitely see this. And, and it does irritate me as an Android user where once in a while someone, Tom, will send an <laughs> iMessage and instead of showing up on my phone, it shows up on my Mac. Right, right. You know? That's true. Well, and that's the thing is, is I don't have a cho- an option really on how you will receive it in that sense mm-hmm. because right. – I'm just sending it through my phone. That's the only way I have to send the message. And, and it's the system that says, oh, they have uh, an iCloud account. I'll send it there. I suppose that's the yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah. You, you send it in. You know, I'm sure if you typed in my phone number, then it would be just a text message versus. I'll have to think. And I, I don't know. Yeah. But you have to think, think about it. I think you are sending it to yeah. my Apple ID. Right. You know, which. Um, oh, OK, fine. It shows up and it shows up on my, my Mac and that's fine. But it's still one of those. But I want it on my phone that's the whole purpose to text messaging is it shows up on my phone i think it's less of a of a lock-in now or less of a advantage to apple now than it used to be or less of a a, a potential uh sales problem i think today like because this was this message that they that you know this email uh from apple it goes back to i don't know 2011 2013 something around around that time today it might not be i don't think it's as big a deal and and apple has done things to make iMessage more open to the more universal product texting protocols that are out there now that Google also supports right. that, you know, exactly. that the carriers all support. And I wonder, I have to wonder if the carriers kind of said, yeah, if you want to keep your phones on our system, you got to support this. I wonder where the power curve sits with the Apple versus carrier thing. <laughs> I'd be curious to see who's got the power in that relationship, but that's, that's, that's another thing. So let's move on to our picks of the week then. Uh, Joanne, what's your pick this week? Well, I had to go deep diving into our archives to, to pick my pick this week because I don't think we've ever, I've ever chosen Evernote. Oh, the yeah. The note-taking system. Classic. Now, a lot of my Apple friends will say, well, we've got notes, and it's almost the same, and you don't have to pay for it. But if you've ever wanted something that really is versatile, and it and just goes everywhere with you. And yes, you do have to pay for this kind of thing. It hasn't let me down in, in almost 15 years that this has been around. I love the way that it, especially what I like from the very beginning was things like how to organize everything and it would sync to any device that you had it on, Windows, Mac, and I think Linux now, if I'm... I think Linux, Android, iOS. Yeah, yeah. you can pretty much connect It's about on everything. Right, so if you're you're one of those people who's not in a walled garden, you, you know, everybody can, can, every device will fit with it. They have the web clipper, which I think is a... a, Yeah, I love that. better than any other uh, system for that, yeah. Yep, and it goes straight into the notebook you want. <laughs> Don't just let it go into your default. Um, I like now that they've come up with handwriting because I use I have a notebook just for genealogy. So I'm, sometimes I'm getting handwritten stuff, and it can actually start to break it down for me, which is good. I can throw PDFs in there. I can search PDFs in there. Um, it's just an altogether great system. And I I picked it basically because my renewal came in today. And I went, oh, (laughs) because I forget. I just use it so much. So you can find it at Evernote.com. And there are three different, you know, there's two different ways for most of us. There's a business plan. If you want to collaborate with a company, it never really worked in a church setting because there's different levels of people's understanding of technology. And this, you have to, you have a little bit <laughs> you have more. You to buy in. Not, you really do. So you've got the basic, which is great if you just have two devices you want to sync to, say your phone and your computer or your tablet and your computer. Um, you don't, it, they give you a, a monthly upload limit of 60 meg, but unless you're a hardcore user, nobody really passes that. And then there's the premium version, which you can sync to anything, and that's $8 a month or $75 a year. 
it's been worth it for me. And I did try at one point when they started really jacking up the price here to move everything to notes. And I found notes to be a little still too clunky for what I was using it for. So I really, really, you know, promote Evernote as if you're looking to take down every single and, and scanning ability too, by the way, you can put scan something and put it right into Evernote and it goes everywhere you need Just it. Using your phone or iPad's camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm, uh, exactly. So a couple things to say with that. I've been using like you, I've been using Evernote for more than more than a decade now, I think for 13 years. Uh, it's, and it's always worked well. It, it does automatic uh, image recognition. So it'll find text in images when you search, which is awesome. They've been working hard, uh, to update it. They've been updating and adding features. It was for a while. It was a little. I was a little worried that they weren't adding features and fixing things. They have a new version of the software, which is not quite feature complete yet. So they've let uh, us older users continue to use something called Evernote Legacy. But there's some really interesting features in the new stuff, including a, a, a dashboard and some other things like that. So um, it's yeah. I call it my second brain. That's where I have all where I remember everything. <laughs> exactly. And if you're and if you are a legacy user, be careful when you go over to the new one like I did, because now they bombard you with changes every other day. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. I can't keep up. <laughs> right, right. So that's right. the only thing they are. They are moving and changing. And there's some really great stuff, but it can be overload from time to time. Very good. Good one. Uh, Father Corey, what's your pick? So my pick is actually a continuation from last time I was on Secrets of Tech. Um, I had picked the Mem Memtest 86 app uh, program. That really, it's actually a traditional program. It's not even an app um, because my Hackintosh developed a bad memory module. And I used the Memtest to find which module it was. So the memory I had bought is from Corsair. And if you've built any computer or replaced any memory in the last 20 years, you know that Corsair is one of the best brands out there. That's the reason why I picked that particular brand. They've, got a, they've had for years a stellar reputation. And they have a lifetime warranty on the memory, limited lifetime warranty, meaning if you, you, know, you try to run your computer underwater, no, they're not going to replace the memory that you just <laughs> fried, you know, something like that. Right. But if there's a manufacturing defect, they replace it. And so I put it to test. I, you know, I put in a trouble ticket. And, and first of all, the memory that I have is other than this one module has been absolutely amazing. It's worked great. It's kept cool. The whole works. It's just been fantastic. So went, looked at their website, saw their warranty, put in a trouble ticket. And of course, immediately I get the email back because of COVID, you might not hear anything for two to three business days. But within 36 hours, I had a response. Wow. Then they had me do the mem test 36. Did that, sent that in, pictures of the memory, the two modules, because it's a kit of two modules, and I bought two kits. Um, so I, I only had half the memory in my system. A whole, only, only had 32 gigs of memory in this system. <laughs> yeah, I built it. It's 64 gigs. I built it to be uh, overkill, and I'm glad <laughs> for it. But anyways, sent the pictures of the modules with the, so they could see the serial numbers. Next day, I got a, uh, yeah, here's your return authorization number. Here's your UPS label prepaid. Drop it off at the UPS store. You're good to go. Package it up. Ship it off. It took, you know, three or four days. You know, typical UPS. Ended up getting there on a Friday. Next Monday, I got a, a notification. Your memory is being shipped from Taiwan, which is interesting because that's where their manufacturer is. They, um, the warranty, the way the warranty specifies is if 90 days, with, within 90 days of purchase, you get new modules. After 90 days, you get refurbished. I ended up getting what I think are new modules from the factory, even though it was almost a year after I bought these modules. Wow. Not refurbished. So, um, and again, took it took four days or whatever, you know, FedEx this time to get it from Taiwan through customs here. Didn't cost me a penny for any of this. So, their great memory, their warranty is awesome. Their customer service is very good. Just amazing. And it was, it was clear I was dealing with an actual human being via email, but still an actual human being that when I would email stuff, he would be the one to get it. it wouldn't be, yeah, I am customer service agent number one, two, three, four, five. Now you will be dealing with customer service agent four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, it's, I was dealing with this one agent. He would get my emails. He would respond. And it was just, I, I can't speak highly enough about the customer service I got from them. Uh, and their memory is fantastic. So if you need to upgrade memory, if you still have systems that can upgrade memory, of course, they've got other things. They've got keyboards. They've got all kinds of other cool stuff. 
highly recommend Corsair. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend their 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 memory again. It's got a good reputation for a good reason. So uh, my pick this week is another of those little uh, menu bar utilities that uh, I've been going through on my computer. And I have about a year's worth of them to go through uh, more. So, uh, but this <laughs> one is something called One Switch, and this is really handy. So just right off the bat. It's available either through SetApp, which is that Netflix for software for Macs. Uh, if you have SetApp, you pay one price a month and you get all access to all the software. And there's dozens of pieces of software there. Or if you just want to buy it outright, it's five bucks. Uh, so not not super expensive. What it does is it it gives you access to a lot of system controls in one place very easily. So like there's you, you drop stuff from the menu and you click a button that says hide all the desktop icons. So say you need to do a presentation. And you need to show your screen and your desktop is full of files and you get like silly files that you don't necessarily want everyone to see the names of, <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, like uh, financial files or something like that. Hide everything at once. All the clutter goes away. You can switch to dark mode right there or light mode. It has the uh, keep awake so you can tell it to, you know, don't let my computer go to sleep or go to screensaver. And there's options. You can drop it in indefinitely five minutes, 30 minutes, two hours. Uh, you can turn the screensaver on or off. Uh, you can connect, say, AirPods if you have them, which is handy right from this screen. So that's really nice. Uh, my favorite one, though, is do not disturb because there isn't an easy way to tell your Mac to do not disturb for a set period of time. Um, you can do it from the notifications that are, ter- you know, do not disturb until tonight or till tomorrow. But I sometimes, especially when I'm podcasting, I want it to do not disturb for the next hour or if i'm doing a podcast several in a row next two hours or five hours and you can do that right from here so that's fantastic so it's a great little app there's some customization options you know you can set up hotkeys and that sort of thing which is really good too and it's simple it's straightforward it's five bucks or part of setup very cool all right so that's it from us so what do you think of the Apple announcement? What do you what was your favorites? What what are you gonna buy? <laughs> Let us know what you think. <laughs> uh I know I I'm interested in the uh the air tags look look fascinating to me. I'm not probably not gonna replace all fifteen at once, but uh maybe I'll get a couple air tags to start with. Um and that Apple TV the the Siri remote really fast is uh, it's gotta be on my list for forgetting so at some point anyway so what do you want what did what did you like what did you dislike what did you think was a miss from apple that's what we want to hear so let us know by commenting on the show at sqpn.com slash technology or the sqpn facebook page facebook.com slash starquest media or send an email to technology at sqpn.com You'll find links from our discussion and our picks of the week on our show notes on sqpn.com. Remember to like each episode of Secrets of Tech on our Facebook page, retweet them on Twitter where we're at sqpn, and leave us comments in both places. Until next time, Father Corey Stika, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of technology. Thanks, Dom. Joanne Mercier, thank you as well. Thanks, Dom. And once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to the Secrets of Technology on StarQuest. <laughs>